Alright, well, welcome to my video about the Oscars. I was so excited for this season. I really was. Mostly because I saw three billboards outside Epping, Missouri. Oh, great movie. I saw it a while ago, though, so I will not be doing a review on it. But I do have some things that I want to talk to you guys about regarding the Oscars. You can check out in the description what my predictions were for all of the Oscars and also who won every Oscar. All 24 categories. But I do have a couple that I want to talk to you about specifically. I'm not going to go through all of them. That's just ridiculous. Um, first was Best Cinematography. I predicted that it would be Roger Deakins for Blade Runner 2049. Didn't see the film. But I also know that Roger Deakins has had 14 nominations. And it's damn time he gets one. And I know he's a great cinematographer. And I did see a couple of clips from that film. And they were very good. So I just assumed the rest of it was great. So congrats Roger Deakins. You deserve it. You deserved it. 13 nomina nominations ago, but I'm glad you finally have it. Um, best costume design. I guessed that it would be Beauty and the Beast. That was wrong. Phantom Thread got it, and I'm not sure how I feel about it. Again, I did not see Phantom Thread, but I did see costumes, and I feel like you don't need to see a movie to know if the costumes are good. I think that Beauty and the Beast should have won it. Um, or maybe some others. Anything but Phantom Thread, really. But I wasn't really super upset about it because, again, I haven't seen Phantom Thread. I haven't seen a lot of these Oscar movies. And I decided that next year for Oscars, as soon as they release the list, I will be watching all of the movies. Everything in there. Um... Best Supporting Actor, Sam Rockwell for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. That was my prediction, and he won it. And I'm so glad he did. Oh my gosh. So glad he did. I loved him in that movie. Also nominated for that for the Best Supporting Actor was um, Woody Harrelson, also for Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri. And I'm glad that Sam Rockwell won over him. And I would have even put, uh, who was it? I don't know. I wouldn't have put Woody Harrelson for the win, though, even if Sam Rockwell wasn't in the category. But he was, and he nailed his part in that movie. So I am so thrilled. That's probably one of the Oscar wins that I am most happy with. God, he did so good. Oh, so good. So good. So good. Um, what do I have next? Um, we're going to get to that one later because I need to rant. Um, best actress, Frances McDormand. Again, three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Again, she did phenomenal. She did a real fun speech at the Oscars too, telling all of the women nominees for every category to stand up and she like applauded them. And she was like a cute little grandma, even though she's only like 53. She was like a cute little grandma at church. And I love her. And she deserved that award more than anyone else in that category. Like, I was a little worried because Meryl Streep's in that category. And she kind of wins everything. And she kind of... It's fair that she wins everything. But I didn't see the post. So I couldn't really say Frances McDormand should have won it over her. Because she's Meryl Streep. But I'm really glad that Frances McDormand won it. Um... Best Actor, I said it should be Daniel Kaluuya from Get Out, and it was not. Gary Oldman won Best Actor for The Darkest Hour. <laughs> um, I was watching the Oscars with some friends, and I can tell you they were not happy. Uh... <laughs> They were actually livid. I saw neither movie. I did see clips and trailers for both movies. And Gary Oldman did not impress me. 
whereas Daniel Kaluuya did. And I think that Daniel Kaluuya got robbed. I keep saying Kaluuya, like the coffee liquor. Kaluuya. How would you say K-A-L-U-U-Y-A? You guys probably know how to say it. I have no idea. Let's just call him Danny. Danny got robbed because he should have, he probably should have won it. And everyone that I've talked to has agreed. Um, Gary Oldman, you're great, but I don't know if you deserved this one. Um, best picture, I said three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri. Shape of Water won. I have not seen Shape of Water. And I immediately put it, I actually put it on my list of movies to watch a while ago. But it was an independent film that I had never heard about. So I hadn't had the opportunity to see it. However, as soon as the Oscars were done, I was on Twitter and saw everyone ranting about how The Shape of Water should not have won Best Picture and how the Russians did it for some weird reason. Um, and I think that they're not giving The Shape of Water the credit it deserves because the only complaints I hear about that movie are that there's a girl that has sex with a fish. And the thing is, is I ran it about this on Twitter. So if you follow me on Twitter, you're going to see it. Um, I'll just read the tweets to you because I don't think I could word it better. It was very frustrating for me because people don't know what they're talking about. Even I saw big actors and directors slamming this movie and I don't understand why. People are idiots. I mean, I don't know shit, but I'm not... Mm, I'm not running around blabbing my mouth and talking shit to the best picture of the year. I had to make a thread of it. Alright, so I said, I think it's wild how people are flustered that The Shape of Water won best picture at the hashtag Oscars. It's fun when you have a little hashtag and the little Oscars trophy comes up. The Academy Award trophy, actually. All because this girl has sex with a fish. First of all, it's not like it was just your average fish. There was an emotional development and it was given a personification. It wasn't just a goldfish in a fish tank with a three second memory. Yeah, people are stupid. I don't know. Second of all, it's a movie. Movies don't show real life things. Biopics and documentaries excluding. And so what? Ever seen Hamlet? Or how about Silence of the Lambs? Both won Best Picture in their year. Bad morals and ethics are what make a plot line. Although this isn't the same situation since it was just a part of the character relationship and wasn't the main plot, but just a small contributor. And it's not saying that we should all go find us a Nemo. It's a movie. It makes me so mad that people complain about stuff. It's like people saying that Superman sucks because it's not realistic. What? It's a movie. Get over it. Yeah, she has sex with a fish, but it's it's not it's nothing major. It's it's a movie and this fish has feelings and she has developed feelings for the fish. She's not just going around committing bestiality. I think that's the word for it. Hobnockers. Idiots. It's a movie and apparently a damn good one at that. I have yet to see it, but I promise I'm not going to claim it was a bad movie on the account of fish sex. I've seen way more disturbing things in movies, and I bet so have you. Get over it, people. Yeah, that was my rant. I'm pissed off. I'm so rattled about it right now. And I haven't even got to the part where I'm going to rant about these goddamn Oscars. All right. Shape of Water, congrats on your win. Can't wait to watch you. All right. The only Oscar that I am livid about. Best original song. All of the other categories, I have not seen every nominee. So I cannot complain when the winner is a movie I have not seen compared to a movie I have seen. That's not a fair comparison. But, best 
original song, I have listened to all of the songs nominated because listening to a three and a half minute song does not take as much time as watching a two hour movie. So I have heard all the songs. And the only category that The Greatest Showman gets a nomination for an Oscar for is Best Original Song. And we all know that it should have been This Is Me from The Greatest Showman. But no, it was Remember Me from Coco. When I listened to Remember Me, I listened to it and I, I knew where it belonged in the story. It's not like I just had no idea what I was doing. Because I, I know music. I may not know shit about movies. I mean, I, I kind of know a little bit now. I'm getting better. But I one thing I do know is music. Okay? Let's get that straight. I love music. And I know music. So in Remember Me, a song that is just like every other goddamn Disney Pixar song... I don't, know, I don't remember if Coco was Pixar or not. But when it is just like every other animated song, and it wins a goddamn Oscar for best original song over This Is Me, the anthem of the entire Greatest Showman, and one of the best messages ever in any song of any musical when This Is Me gets gypped by Coco, I am pissed off. In case you couldn't tell. Like I said, that's the only Oscar that I really had a problem with. And that is my review of the Oscars. Make sure to check out my predictions and the winners in the description. And I'm going to go ahead and put a link to the song Remember Me and a link to the song This Is Me. Oh. They're both me's. That's fun. I'm going to go ahead and put those links in there and I'll let you decide for yourself. Like, comment, share, comment if you think that Remember Me deserved the Oscar. And I will strongly disagree with you. But we can talk about it. Let's talk about it. I would love to argue with you guys. Please like, comment, share. But you have to have a valid excuse. You can't just be like, oh, this is me. Suck. Fight. Fight me. Oh. Have a great day, guys. I love all my viewers. Congrats, Coco, on your win. But more importantly, congrats, Shape of Water. And the greatest showman, I still love you. Bye, guys. Have a great day. When 900 years old you reach, look as good you or not. Hmm? <laughs>